thank you to everyone who raised their hands. Uh, it looks like about half of you were able to do that. If you're not able to use the Zoom raise hand, then you can actually just hold your hand up in front of the screen, in front of the camera so that we can see it. It'll take us a little longer to find that, but when we ask you to raise your hand, if you have something to say, you can hold your hand up in front of your camera. Um, now let's begin our service. Good morning, my name is Andrew Mills, and I welcome you to the Unitarian Church of Edmonton online Zoom service. Whether you've been part of our congregation for de decades or this is your first time visiting, we welcome you. Whatever the faith and traditions of your past, we welcome you. Whatever your theological stance, we welcome you. Whoever you are and whom whomever you love, we welcome you. Whatever your heritage, we welcome you. I especially welcome any visitors who might be with us today and invite you to join us for conversation in the breakout rooms once the service has ended. We also invite you to go to our online guest book, which you can find on the UCE website, uce.ca slash guestbook. We acknowledge that we're on Treaty 6 territory, home of First Nations, Métis and Inuit people. A treaty is an inheritance, a responsibility, and a relationship. May we be good neighbors to one another, good stewards to our planet, and good ancestors to all our children. Good morning. I'm Leanne Washington, and I'm blessed to be the Unitarian Church of Edmonton's interim minister. This is a spiritual practice Sunday in which you are invited in the first half of the service to name what it is in the greater community that pains you, hurts your heart, or dampens your spirit. In the second part of the service, you are invited to share what gives you hope. There will be readings and music throughout our service. Our call to worship was written by Reverend Amy Russell, a friend and colleague of mine from Virginia. You who feel your heart is breaking, come in. You who are confused and wondering, come in. You who are angry and pain or not wanting to be here, come in. You who are hopeful and energized, Come in. Come into this community of your heart where you have been held in love and comfort, where you have sh shared your joy and your spirit, where you have asked questions because you felt they needed asking, where you have found friendship and companions where you have sometimes not agreed and sometimes not felt comforted and sometimes not felt heard. For in this place, we can be together. We can gather in all the conflicting emotions tumbling around in our heads and our hearts. We bring them together here and lay them on the altar of community for community means that fragile, not perfect human beings can come together in the name of peace and hope and joy and seek to find it again. Bring your broken heart and your grief, share them. Bring your confusion and your questions, share them. Bring your anger and your pain, share them. As we enter into worship, please know that we hear you and we are here for you. Our chalice lighting this morning comes from Douglas John Traversa.
a Unitarian Universalist. In a world filled with darkness of ignorance, let us bring the light of reason. In a world filled with the darkness of despair, may we share the light of hope. In a world filled with the darkness of hate, let us shine the light of love. Please enjoy our song of gathering, hymn number 354, We Laugh, We Cry.
cry, we live, we die, we dance, we sing our song. We need to feel the freedom just to have some time alone. But most of all, we need close friends we can call our very own. As Unitarian Universalists, most of us do balance between time with others and time alone. And in this time of COVID-19 restrictions, many of us are finding ourselves starving for a return to normalcy and regular church life. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like this is going to happen anytime soon. Sylvia Crow will now read a poem written by Reverend Gretchen Haley, aptly titled, Shelter in Place. There is enough space between us to hold all that you are carrying, all that you've been waking and wondering, worrying about, wearing out with confusion or attempts to control, trying to find some sense of normalcy. All of your irritability, your curiosity, your fragile sobriety, your numb disbelief, your loneliness, your exhaustion, your daily question, allergies to the virus, and your joy. We can hold that can hold all of it here for this time and bless it. Here we will call each other just as we are, beloved. Here in this far apart space that is also close in, so much remains uncertain. With each passing breath, the sound is shifting. All we can say for sure is that we are caught in this tangled blessing of life, grief and gratitude together, like always, step more. All of us have suffered personal limitations and losses. Most have suffered minor inconveniences, but others have suffered devastating life changes. Know that you may reach out to myself, Reverend Audrey Brooks, or Anyone else you know well and feel comfortable with, please don't hold it in. The COVID-19 pandemic has placed a spotlight on already existing, but under normal circumstances easily overlooked, societal inequities and injustices in Edmonton and in Alberta, in Canada and all around the world. So today we are focusing on the societal, political and cultural events and systems that are unjust and oppressive. It is Franz Kafka who said, you can hold yourself back from the sufferings of the world. That is something you are free to do and it accords with your nature. But perhaps this very holding back is the one suffering you could avoid. This morning, we are not going to hold back we are going to share in a word or phrase or short sentence, the suffering of the world that is weighing most heavily on our minds, our hearts and our spirits. As we enter into this time of naming and deep listening to one another, I want you to know that while this service is being recorded in order to protect everyone's privacy, we will not post it anywhere until we have removed the sharing portions. Please consider this a safe space. During the candles of care and connection portion of our regular worship services, I invite you to share something personally significant to you. This morning, I invite you to consider what's going on in the greater world outside your personal sphere and outside our religious community that has recently caused you concern or emotional pain. For everyone's benefit, I reiterate my request that you name what pains you as succinctly as possible in a word or a phrase or one short sentence. This is not the time to try to educate us or persuade us, such is not in the spirit of this spiritual practice. 
and it's only fair that I let you know that failure to honor this one limitation may result in having your microphone muted. However, your voice and your pain are precious to us. So after the service, a group of us, particularly myself and Reverend Audrey Brooks, will remain in the main room and that's when you're welcome to further educate us about what you name here. As a reminder, please raise your hand electronically if you are able. If not, please raise your hand physically so that our host, Jeff Bizance, can see that you would like to share. If your hand is raised, he will call your name and ask you to unmute yourself to share. Once you have shared, your mic will be muted again and Jeff will call on another person and so on. I encourage everyone to share because each time one of us shares, our collective experience becomes deeper and richer. And each time someone shares, I will place an unlit candle on my coffee table turned worship table. When you are not sharing, this is an opportunity to practice deep listening. I will begin the effect of COVID-19 on mental and emotional health.
you can see a representation of what pains us in our local community, our national community, and the world. With microphones muted, you are invited to sing along with this recording of Comfort Me, which is hymn number 1002 in our teal hymnal, Singing the Journey.
As Unitarian Universalists, we are called to be in solidarity with all marginalized and oppressed people. I invite you to affirm your commitment to support in any way that you can those who are marginalized and oppressed in our society. Karen Belita, president of our board of trustees, will lead you in a litany written by Reverend Katie Scudder. This litany names positions of privilege that many of us hold in our society, as well as those who are less privileged and marginalized. If you are part of the privileged identity group with mics muted, please respond to each call of solidarity with we pledge our support to those of the marginalized group. From those of us who are sexual, heterosexual and or cisgendered, we honor the LGBTQ 2F community and commit ourselves to acts of solidarity. We pledge our support. From those of us who are white or of European descent, we honor people of color, Black, Indigenous, Latinx, and Asian folk, and we commit ourselves to acts of solidarity. We pledge our support. From those of us who are insulated from the effects of climate change, we honor those on the front line and we commit ourselves to acts of solidarity. We pledge our support. From those of us from middle or upper income households, we honor those who struggle with poverty and we commit ourselves to acts of solidarity. We pledge our support. From those of us who have not experienced violence, we honor those who are survivors and we commit ourselves to acts of solidarity. We pledge our support. For all those who suffer from prejudice, poverty, violence, disaster, illness, and environmental degradation, we who we have not named or perhaps do not know yet, we keep our hearts and minds open to solidarity in new ways to new people. We pledge our support. May we each and all use the power we have as allies to our family, friends, and neighbors who are suffering. As long as there is hate, oppression, war, indifference, and injustice in the world, there is always more love, peace, hope, and joy to be found. With mics muted, please join in singing There Is More Love Somewhere, hymn number 95. There is more love somewhere. There is more love somewhere. I'm gonna keep on till I find it. There is more love. Somewhere. 
Each of us carries more love in our hearts than we even know. Love is one thing in our world that is unlimited. Our next reading, The Servant Candle, was written by Jose Rizal, who was a Filipino nationalist during the end of the Spanish colonial period of the Philippines. He's widely considered one of the greatest heroes of the Philippines. In The Servant Candle, he reminds us that the light of freedom, of truth, and of love only increases in the giving. A candle alone is a small thing, but one candle can light another and see how its own light increases as it gives a flame to another. Light is the power to chase away the darkness. Throughout history, darkness has tried to smother the light, but always in the end it fails. For always, somewhere in the world, the light remains, ready to burn its brightest where it is darkest. And every free people in the world has remained free by resisting those who would extinguish this light in people's hearts, the light of freedom, of truth, of love. We who seek to increase this light must remember that. Just as one candle alone is a small thing, one person alone is a small thing, one nation alone is a small thing. We must learn to see how much we need others and we must learn to see how others need us. We cannot hope to reach our highest capacities until we help those around us reach theirs. And when one heart kindles another, when one mind illumines another, the light increases within us as we pass it on. Each of us is such a light. Each of us has the power to cast away the darkness in ourselves and in others. And we are all strongest when we help each other. We are strongest when we help each other. And here, we are blessed to belong to a caring and compassionate community that has committed itself to supporting each other and the greater community. While there is much going on in the world that distresses us, there are also many indications that things will get better, that we can be agents of positive change in this world, and that our voices are sometimes heard and heeded. You are now invited to name what gives you hope as succinctly as possible in a word or phrase or short sentence. And again, I encourage everyone to share whether you shared the first time or not. Each time someone shares, I will light one of the candles previously laid on the worship table. And I have more candles if we need them. I will begin. The energy and commitment of our youth.
turn this, um, we'll go back to the presentation now. Now that we have identified what gives us hope, and I just want to reflect to you that I added many more candles of hope than we had originally laid out as candles of concern or pain. Please join in celebrating how in community we can bring each other hope when on our own hope is hard to find. With mics muted, please join in singing 346, Come Sing a Song with Me. Nancy Seawood, a Unitarian Universalist writer and photographer, reminds us in her poem, Hold On to What is Good, that with hope in our hearts, it is so much easier to find something good to hold on to, and for that to be enough to get us through. Hold on to what is good, even if it is a handful of earth. Hold on to what you believe, even if it is a tree which stands by itself. Hold on to what you must do, even if it is a long way from here. Hold on to life, even when it is easier letting go. Hold on to my hand, even when I have gone away from you.
Generosity, like gratitude, is a spiritual practice, one that enlarges the heart, enlightens the spirit. For no matter how much or how little we have in the sharing of it, both the one who gives and the one who receives are blessed. We are a self-governing and self-supporting community. We rely on your donations to maintain our building, our staff, and our programs. And now more than ever, we need your financial support. Please visit our website at uce.ca to find the donation method that best suits you. For the month of October, we encourage you to also support Child Haven. Please visit their website for more information about them. Our chalice extinguishing, this is the message of our faith, comes from Reverend Maureen Killeran, a, United, a Unitarian Universalist minister. This is the message of our faith, to act with passion in the face of injustice, to love with courage in the midst of life's pain. This is the meaning of our chalice flame. May it empower our hearts until we are together again. Before we part, I want to acknowledge and thank those who, who have collaborated with me to provide our worship service today. Our readers, Sylvia Crow and Karen Bolita. Our Zoom hosts, Jeff Bazant, Sylvia Crow and Karen Bolita. Our rec recorder, Ruth Marriott. And last but certainly not least, our slide creator and runner this morning, Andrew Mills. Without their help, we would not have been able to enjoy this morning's worship service. We're looking for more people to join us on the production side. So if you're interested and would like to join our team, please contact Susan Rutan. We would all be most appreciative for your assistance. As for readers, we now have a way to sign up online using Sign Up Genius. Please see the link in our monthly newsletter. It will also appear in every Friday email. Your presence and your voice are precious to us. And most of all, I thank you for your participation in today's worship service. As we go into the week ahead, let us remember what we have experienced here this morning, a movement from pain to hope, which gives us strength and courage. Poet Mark Nepo suggests that it is living from the center that is what enables us to face whatever life has to offer. And I hope that this morning's spiritual practice has helped you return to your center. Let us encourage one another to be bold and engaging in the world around us. Let us encourage one another to give of ourselves and to share with those we meet during the week the confidence and heart to live as fully as possible within whatever circumstances we find ourselves. With mics muted, please join in singing our final song, Hymn 121, We'll Build a Land.
This concludes our worship service as we sing Carry the Flame. some of the comments in the chat. So thank you. Now, please feel free to take a three minute comfort break or watch our weekly announcements as they slide by. In about three minutes, you will be randomly placed in breakout rooms for coffee and chat. As I said earlier, I and others will remain in the main room for further conversation. You are free to decline being placed in a breakout room, or you may go to your assigned breakout room and then return to the main room when you are ready. I will stay in the main room for about an hour. <laughs> 